Used syringes being found frequently in our communities. 35 foreign nationals from West Virginia were arrested in a 10-day sweep and two people were arrested after an inmate escaped from custody. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on the news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. A scary situation developed this week in two communities in our region when parents found used syringes in community parks where children play. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins has been working to find out the latest twist to this drug abuse epidemic and how it's being handled. She files this report. News reports of used syringes being found in public parks are becoming more and more common and are usually suspected to be associated with illegal drug use. Over the weekend, syringes were found in a park in neighboring Mingo County, West Virginia, but officials in Pikeville say they are battling the same problem. In the last couple of weeks, uh, the 911 centers took a couple of calls on needles being found in the city park, uh, more specifically in the bathroom, uh, not properly disposed of. With school already out in many places, Maynard says many people will be utilizing parks and public places in the city. And as the numbers of visitors increase, so will the numbers of maintenance crews looking after these areas. These guys are constantly in the area of, of the city park and Bob Amos Park. And, and they, they're checking these bathrooms multiple times a day for cleanliness, you know, filling up the supplies, just making sure in general order. And part of their duties is to look for these kind of things. But even with their best efforts, there will still be the chance that another used syringe will be found. And if that happens... Don't touch it. Just give us a call down at the 911 center. Uh, we've got guys prepared to come out and collect those and get them up. You know, our goal obviously is not to have them there, but uh, you know, over the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of issues. Police patrols in public areas of Pikeville have increased both in vehicles and on foot in an effort to be more visible and hopefully deter illegal drug activity in these areas. Reporting in Pikeville, I'm Shannon Deskins for EKB News. Federal immigration officials say a total of 35 foreign nationals from West Virginia were arrested in a 10-day sweep that ended Wednesday. There were 186 total arrests made in five states during the sweep, according to a news release from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. The arrests were part of a targeted enforcement aimed at criminal aliens, immigration fugitives, re-entrants, and other immigration violators. Residents of Johnson County were given the opportunity to vote Tuesday in favor of or against a so-called nickel tax. A proposed levy by the Johnson County Board of Education of an additional equivalent tax rate of five cents on each $100 valuation of real and personal property to raise funds that would be dedicated strictly to new construction and renovation of existing schools. After the polls closed at 6 p.m. and all precincts accounted for, a disappointed Johnson County superintendent saw Johnson County vote a collective no. I guess it's just the anti-tax message, so to speak, out there. Again, Johnson County Schools has one of the high, lowest tax rates. The state of Kentucky have 173 school districts. Uh, all our numerous counties surrounding us have much higher hack, tax brackets. Our neighboring uh, uh, counties all do. Our independent school district is almost double what we are here in Johnson County. Uh, so, uh, again, uh, just very disappointed in our community not stepping up for our students Johnson County. There was a total of 2,829 ballots cast, 1,278 in favor, and 1,551 against the additional tax rate, leaving a margin of 273 votes. A Pike County man was indicted this week for leaving the scene of a wreck that mortally injured another driver on May 13th in Virgie. 27-year-old Jerry Shields of Virgie was charged in the indictment with leaving the scene of a motor vehicle injury accident. Pike Commonwealth's attorney Rick Bartley said 72-year-old Paul Chico Newsom died May 19th. Unfortunately, this man that was injured in the wreck uh, has passed away from his injuries uh, after about a week following the wreck. And so it's a very sad case in that sense. Now, Shields has not been charged with causing the wreck. Uh, this is simply leaving the scene of the accident. A warrant has been issued for Jerry Shields' arrest. He could face up to five years in prison 
if convicted. A Pike County Detention Center inmate escaped from custody Friday while on work detail in the community of Coal Run. Jailer Freddie Lewis tells EKB News that the city of Coal Run signed the inmate out on Friday morning and as the inmate was working around big lots cleaning out a ditch line, he simply walked off. Coal Run City Police quickly found 32-year-old David Ball of Harlan County, but he was not alone. He was changing clothes that had allegedly been brought to him by 29-year-old Ashley Pace of Everts. Both Ball and Pace were charged with second-degree escape and lodged in the Pike County Detention Center. Jailer Freddie Lewis went on to say that the work release program will be on temporary lockdown pending a new training program that the inmates must complete before working in the community. We're going to be training them on some, a lot of the do's and the don'ts uh, while they're out here in the public. Uh, some of the things they're not allowed to do, uh, we're going to be training them and showing them what happens when you try to walk off. Uh, basically the consequences of walking off, we've got some examples. Uh, we've had a few to do this throughout the last few years and you know it happens at every jail. I think sometimes they don't understand because most of these people are community level inmates that only has a few months to go. Jailer Freddie Lewis elaborated further by saying that only two work release crews would be permitted to go out into the community. One male crew led by Burl Robbie Vanover and one female crew led by Crystal Burchett. Two police officers were injured Friday while pursuing a suspect on foot. The suspect was wanted on warrants and fled from police into the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River. The suspect was caught, but during the pursuit, the officers were injured. The Police Department received a complaint of a suspicious individual on Marion's branch. Uh, we had three officers respond. When they got up here, they made contact with the male subject and discovered he had a warrant on him. Once he determined that we knew he had a warrant, a foot pursuit ensued over the hill onto the train tracks in the river bank. During that pursuit, we did have two officers that were injured and they are going to be transported to Papa Medical Center for treatment. The suspect is also going to be transported for treatment. He was also injured during the pursuit. Uh, we do have him in custody at this time and we'll be able to release further a little bit later. No names have been released at this time. The conditions of the two officers was not available. Coming up, EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week in weather. That's coming up next on This Week. Hi, I'm Anita Wilson, Pikeville Medical Center's Vice President for Surgery. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th, I want to thank our employees for their unsurpassed dedication to our patients. I'm Dr. Tim Wright. Quality health care would not be possible without the efforts of each and every employee. Thank you and happy hospital week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the Emax. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. Following is a paid advertisement. Have you been injured in a car wreck? You're unable to work and don't know what to do or where to turn? Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, is ready to take your case. Call 606-369-1807. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law, will come to your house and talk with you. He'll provide you with respectful and professional representation. Paul Howard Jr. will make sure you get the compensation you're entitled to. Located at 118 Caroline Avenue in Pikeville. Paul Howard Jr., attorney at law. 606-369-1807. Commonwealth Pharmacy guarantees fast and friendly service with the availability of a convenient drive through Pharmacists Jody and Joanne Holland offer exceptional patient care and quality customer service. All insurance and compensation is accepted. Commonwealth Pharmacy is open Monday through Friday from 8.30 until 6 and Saturday from 9 till 2. Commonwealth Pharmacy, 606-437-0701 for all your prescription, over-the-counter, and preventative medicinal needs. Welcome back into this week on EKB TV. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins with your look back in weather this week. And it's been a little back and forth all week long. We started the week, a couple of showers and temperatures that were fairly comfortable around 70 degrees on Monday, 57 the overnight low. We did have a trace of precipitation on Monday, a little more uh, shower and thunderstorm activity on Tuesday. Temperatures again near 70 degrees, but Wednesday, 
a lot of the area picked up a lot of rain. Over at the National Weather Service, picking up just shy of four tenths of an inch of rain, 71 degrees, and then a lot of rain continued during the day on Thursday. Just could not get a break from the rain showers. And look what happened to the temperatures. The high on Thursday, only 58 degrees. Our normal high this time of the year is in the mid 70s, but we did rebound back into the mid 70s as we wrapped up the week on Friday. But let's talk about how much rain we picked up from Monday night all the way through Wednesday night. And you can see some very heavy amounts of rain, an inch or two from southern parts of Floyd County and then especially across Pike County. Flash flood warnings in effect for several hours during the day on Wednesday because a lot of this actually fell in probably an hour or two time. That's why we had such an ordeal with flooding across much of Pike County. Sean. All right, thanks, Lathan. Much of those heavy rains Lathan spoke about brought flash flooding to Elkhorn City Thursday. However, the water quickly receded as quickly as it rushed in, forcing one resident to leave her home. I came home and it was up about three foot, 18 inches inside. And this drain down here had stopped up. Inside, everything at 18 inches and below was so my clothes fell down in the closet and they're just in mud. It's mud all in there. I'm going somewhere else to spend the night. Yeah, I'll be fine. God will take care of me. Rushing waters caused property damage at another residence. It started pouring down the rain. I mean, it was coming ungodly amount of rain at one time. Two to three inches deep. You can see that way it covered the grass and the sidewalk and uh, hit, uh, hit running right towards that wall. That had a lot to do with it, I guess. The water got behind it. The rain was like it's going two different directions, and all of a sudden the wall it collapsed. Allman went on to say he was thankful because the wall fell just a few minutes after his grandson pulled out of the driveway. Coming up, a story that may shock you. I know it did me, but first, Michaela Colley will be in with sports. It's coming up next on This Week. Hi, I'm Michelle Hagee, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer at Pikeville Medical Center. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, we ask you to join us May 7th through the 13th to recognize our outstanding employees. I'm Dr. Kevin Pugh. Pikeville Medical Center's employees not only offer professional skills to patients, but provide them with compassion and understanding. Thank you for all that you do, and happy hospital week. Attention small business owners. Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes, you're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-706-9477. That's 800-706-9477. It was a huge week in sports this week as teams from around the region finished their regular season schedules and began their postseason journeys. With the 15th region tournament being held on Monday from Pike Central High School, let's take a look back at each of the 15th region's respective districts. First off, we head to Johnson County where the 57th district tournament was held. On the baseball side of things, Johnson Central landed themselves in the championship game after blanking Sheldon Clark 10 to nothing on Tuesday. Paintsville, on the other hand, took control of McGoffin County, outscoring them 11 to three to advance to the championship on Friday. Immediately following the semifinal game, Johnson Central and Paintsville took the field where the Golden Eagles came out victorious for the fourth consecutive year by a score of 14 to five. Johnson Central will be a number one seed in the upcoming tournament, while Paintsville will be a two seed. 
On the softball stage, McGoffin County got the best of Sheldon Clark 6-4 in the first round, while Johnson Central's Elena Castle belted out a two-run home run to secure their run-roll victory in the first round, defeating Paintsville 10-0. And it was much the same in the championship round as Johnson Central took home the championship once again, 13-1 over McGoffin County. It was a washed out week all week long after rain, rain, and more rain on the fields around the region. Now we move to the 58th district. Prestonsburg put themselves in the driver's seat of the Floyd County District, blanking Betsy Lane 15-0, while Allen Central and South Floyd played in their final game as athletic teams before consolidating into Floyd Central next year. The Rebels got the best of the Raiders with a 9-2 win on Tuesday, advancing to play Prestonsburg in the championship round. Prestonsburg will be a one seed in the tournament beginning Monday as they blanked Allen Central 13-0. Taking a look at the softball diamond from the 58th district, South Floyd dominated Prestonsburg 16-1, landing themselves in the championship game against Betsy Lane after the Lady Bobcats pulled out a late game victory over Allen Central 15-12. Betsy Lane kept the bats hot in the championship game, outscoring South Floyd 19-4 to become the 58th district champions. Continuing our way around the region, we now head to Eastridge High School where the 59th District Baseball and Softball Tournaments were held. On the baseball diamond, Shelby Valley got the best of Eastridge 14-0 to put themselves in the championship game against the Pikeville Panthers. But the runs weren't in the Wildcats' favor on Friday as Pikeville blanked Valley 8-0, giving the Pikeville Panthers their ninth consecutive 59th District title. On the softball diamond early Saturday morning, the 59th District Tournament wrapped up after getting the latest start out of all of the games from around the region. On Friday, it was a close call between Shelby Valley and Eastridge, but the Lady Warriors held off for the 2-1 win. And it was all Lady Panthers action Saturday morning as they blanked Shelby Valley 11-0 for the number one seed. The 60th District Baseball and Softball Tournaments were held in Louisa this year with the Bulldogs coming out victorious on both sides of the ball. It took four days for the 60th District Championship game between Lawrence County and Pike Center to be played after a rain delay late Tuesday night. The Bulldogs had 11-4 advantage and held on to that lead taking home the victory over Pike Central 13-5 for the championship. And on the softball side of things, it took extra innings for the Bulldogs to pull out the 3-2 victory over Belfry for the 60th District Championship. That's this week in sports. Be sure to tune back in with us next week to hear the results of the 15th Region Baseball and Softball Tournaments. Back to you, Sean. Becoming a deputy jailer at the Pike County Detention Center requires a little more than simply filling out an application. It requires many hours of training in the classroom and also training that is a little more intensive. The jail held a taser training class Tuesday for their newest deputy jailers. Jailer Freddie Lewis says he thinks his employees should not only be well trained, but experience what five seconds of 50,000 volts is like. Our job is not to uh you know, beat on people, to be brutal to people. Our job is to basically restrain someone that is either a danger to themselves or a danger to one of our officers or another inmate. Uh, the only time that we expect our tasers to be used here in this jail is if it's an absolute have to. And then once the person is subdued and they're down and they're no threat to nobody else, then at that point in time, uh, our job's done. One thing is certain, a deputy jailer will definitely be more hesitant in deploying his taser once having experienced it for himself. I was watching other guys and I didn't think it'd be that bad but until it hit and it's, it's pretty rough. It's, your whole body just stiffens up and it's, it's wild. It's something everybody should experience really. It puts a lot more responsibility on what you have, what gear you use and just what options you have. You know, it's good to have it just in case but there's still going to be more options to use before we use any kind of non-lethal or lethal force. Jailer Freddie Lewis says his deputies must also go through a similar training and be exposed to pepper spray. Coming up, we shine a spotlight on a familiar face who'll be playing some new music and we'll take a sneak peek at an EKB TV special presentation. It's all coming up next on This Week. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Harris, Medical Director of Cardiology at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May the 7th through the 13th. We appreciate the nearly 3,300 employees who dedicate their lives to serving others. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Cody Reynolds. Everyone plays an important role in taking care of our patients at Tyvon Medical Center, from maintenance to housekeeping and nursing and beyond. Happy Hospital Week. By 2020, 56% of Kentucky jobs will require either a college certificate or a college degree. But only one in four public college students will graduate on time, and many may not finish at all. You can put the odds in your favor. Just earn 15 credits each semester, or 30 a year, to finish on time, and save money on tuition. Talk to your advisor and make a plan. Kentucky's colleges and universities agree. Take 15 to finish on time. Get in, get out, get going. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new red copper cookware. The revolutionary pan made with non-stick ceramic and super strong copper. Guaranteed to stay scratch free forever. It's lightweight yet super strong so it won't scratch, peel or chip into your food. Red copper is a baking pan with a handle. It goes into the oven up to 500 degrees and everything slides right out. Cook my healthy crispy chicken fingers with little or no fat or oil. Chop steak and onion for a melty Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely no sticking. Or whisk egg without a mixing bowl, truly a time saver. Call now and receive my 10-inch red copper pan for just $19.99. Plus, get my recipe book free. Call now and you can double the offer and receive a second set. Plus, our new forever sharp copper knife. Just pay a separate fee. Razor sharp and food slides right off. An incredible value. Call now. Call 1-800-426-0848 to get your special offer red copper pan. Call now or go to redcopperpan.com. So call 1-800-426-0848. Call now. There's a musical tradition here in the mountains unlike anywhere else in America. During this week, we shine a light on part of that musical tradition. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy our mountain music. It's time now for Mountain Music, being brought to you by the Mountain Arts Center, the main stage of the Country Music Highway. I've been up and down the river, seen the highways and back roads. This country sure is beautiful, but a byway ain't a home. Yeah, my eyes have gazed upon some land I thought I'd never see. But it feels like someone else's life and it don't belong. I'm so tired of being alone. Technical Nick Jamerson just released a solo album, one that he's very proud of and one that's very personal. Well, NJ, I just finished it up uh, the early part of this year, um, releasing it strictly through my website, nicholasjamerson.com. I think this whole, the last three years, I've just gone through this this process, this awakening, um, becoming more reacquainted with my true self. With Sunday Best, a lot of things, that, that whole thing just happened so fast and so there was just a lot happening and, and not really being able to experience things and then have the time to really reflect on it to experience growth. I'm so tired of being alone In technical motives Watching late night talking shows Lately I feel like a road shot full of holes Leaving everything behind me Everywhere I go, this ain't my bed what I chose I used to be outnumbered But now I'm just a ghost I'm just a
On Memorial Day, EKB-TV will be airing our latest one-on-one -on -one special featuring Prestonsburg attorney John Rosenberg. Having spent nearly a half century in eastern Kentucky, Rosenberg has forged a name for himself as a champion of the little people in the legal system, as well as for his personal and financial contributions to a number of causes. But as we learn in our conversation with him, that commitment to serve was born out of witnessing the horrors of Nazi Germany. November 9th, 1938, you're right, called Kristallnacht or Crystal Night, mm -hmm. and uh, named because it's the night of broken glass. It was the night that all the Jewish synagogues, or pretty much all the Jewish synagogues throughout Germany were burned down or destroyed. And uh, of course, we were living next to the synagogue, and during that night, uh, the Nazis came and uh, rousted us out of our apartment, had us go down into the courtyard. They dynamited the uh, inside of the synagogue, but they took all the prayer books and the holy Torahs, the Old Testaments, we call them, which are in an ark at the front of the synagogue and brought them into the courtyard and made a bonfire there and we had to, we stood there and watched it. There was a Nazi with a machine, with a gun guarding us. While all this was going on, there was a group of them that went inside to carry out the dynamiting and the bombing. And as I've told others, my mother asked this Nazi with the semi-automatic or whatever he had, whether they were gonna kill us. And he said he really didn't know they took your father away the, that night. There were bakers and bankers and all sorts of different professions. And um, from and it turned out, of course, they took them to Buchenwald concentration camp where they had a pretty horrific time and were there for 17 days. One on One with John Rosenberg airs Monday, May 29th at 6 p.m. with a repeat at 10 right here on EKB-TV and EKBTV.com. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on This Week. Hello, my name is Cheryl Hickman. I'm Vice President, Assistant to the President and CEO at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th. With the commitment and hard work of our employees, we have grown from a small local hospital to a regional referral center. Hi, I'm Dr. Judson Mel. I want to thank all of our PMC employees for always putting our patients first. Happy Hospital Week. Mahindra wants to help you rise with the real workhorses. There's no limit to where you can go with the Emax. Tackle even the biggest loads with the all-new Impact XTV. And tap into True Tractor with the Max. Make the smart choice. Mahindra, come rise with us. Rental Pro, the number one Mahindra dealer in Kentucky. Here are some upcoming events that you may be interested in. On June 2nd and 3rd, the Apple Shop Grounds in Whitesburg will once again be alive with music, art, theater, food, and crafts for the 31st Seed Time on the Cumberlands Festival. As always, Seed Time is free and open to all. For more information, visit SeedTimeFestival.org. Racing is coming back to East Kentucky Friday, June 2nd and Saturday, June 3rd as the Combs Airport Street Shootout brings the street to the strip. Friday, June 2nd, admission is $5 and kids 12 and under get in free. Gates open at 4 p.m. Good, clean family fun with inflatables for the kids, plenty of food vendors, and lots of racing. The Friends of Jenny Wiley 5K Road and Trail Run will take place in beautiful Jenny Wiley State Resort Park Saturday, June 3rd from 9 a.m. till noon. All funds raised will be used in support of Jenny Wiley State Resort Park. A fun run slash walk of one plus miles will also be available for those that are interested. I hope that you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6 p.m. right here on EKB TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.